You know, I love this idea of radical openness, the free exchange of information, the free flow of ideas, creating spaces in which ideas can have sex, as Matt Ridley talks about. And this is huge because it turns out that ideas are just as real as the neurons they inhabit, as James Glick tells us. You know, a new kingdom rises above the biosphere. The denizens of this kingdom are ideas, because ideas have retained some of the properties of organisms, it turns out. They leap from brain to brain. They compete for the limited resources of our attention. They have infectivity. They have spreading power. They are what Richard Dawkins calls the new replicators, born from the primordial soup of human culture. Their vector of transmission is language and electronic communications. And though ideas are not made of nucleic acid, they have achieved more evolutionary change and at a rate that leaves the old gene panting far behind. You know, Ray Kurzweil says our ability to create virtual models in our heads, combined with our modest looking thumbs, was sufficient to usher in a secondary force of evolution called technology. And it will continue until the entire universe is at our fingertips. This is unbelievable stuff. It speaks to the telescopic nature of evolutionary change. More change in the last hundred years than in the last billion years. Terence McKenna actually wrote that from the moment that human beings invented language, biological evolution essentially ceased and evolution became a cultural epigenetic phenomenon. Now, we take in matter of low organization, we put it through our mental filters, and we extrude it in the form of space shuttles and iPhones. You know, the imaginary foundation tells us that what imagination does is it allows us to conceive of delightful future possibilities, pick the most amazing one, and pull the present forward to meet it. You know, imagine how impoverished this world would have been if we hadn't invented the technology of the oil painting in time for Van Gogh, or the technology of the musical instrument in time for Beethoven and Mozart to unfurl through it, you know, with the revolutions in biotechnology and nanotechnology, the free exchange of information is allowing us to conceive of radical new things. Freeman Dyson says, in the future, new generation of artists will be writing genomes with the fluency that Blake and Byron wrote verses. What is great in man, said Nietzsche, is that he is a bridge and not an end. You know, we're on a trajectory, smack in the middle between the born and the made, wrote Kevin Kelly. And so, radical openness, it's huge. It's a universe of possibility. It's gray infused by color. It's the invisible revealed. It's the mundane blown away by awe. We need to cultivate radical openness as a way of participating and accelerating evolution.